Hi class, we're outside again to have a look at a rain gauge. In chapter one, you spent a little bit of time having a look at some weather maps. We jumped to chapter 12 to learn a little bit about the symbology and don't forget to look in appendix B at all of those symbols in the back of your textbook because we'll use those through the semester and you want to get familiar with them. So in understanding weather maps, we need to understand where did the data come from that we use to make those maps. Now, you saw in the video uh, on the textbook website about an ACES automated weather station. And there's one in Grand Junction out at the airport at Walker Field. Um, if you ever get a chance to visit that National Weather Service office, it's a great tour. You can watch a balloon release um, and see all of their equipment that they use to record weather data. Um, but not all weather data is measured at these ACES stations. There are only, I think, 125 of them in the United States. There are other stations that people actually physically go out and record what's happening with the weather, the temperature, the humidity, the precipitation, the rain, the snow. Um, and there's a network of volunteers called COCORAS, which I'll share the website with you and tell you more about it later, um, of people that actually report the rainfall every day at 7 in the morning. And so I have one of these gauges in my backyard and I wanted to show it to you. Um, it's a pretty cool gauge. It's not um, a recording gauge and it's not automated. You have to physically go out and, and read it yourself every day. Um, but it's a pretty cool little instrument. Um, what we have here on the top is a funnel that funnels the rain into the smaller cylinder inside. And see, the smaller cylinder has some graduations. It has some markings. Uh, it's in, it, it can measure up to an inch. If you get more than an inch, then it overtops into the bigger cylinder. And then you just go, you measure your inch, you dump that out, and then you pour this in and you measure however much you got more than an inch. That's happened to me once so far here in Grand Junction. So, um, so it's calibrated in tenths of an inch, and then the little marks are hundredths of an inch. So we're able to measure hundredths of an inch of rain. And the way this works, why this works so well, is that the, di the area of this big circle is ten times bigger than the area of this little circle here. And so what happens is, if you got you know, a tenth of an inch in this, it would just be a tiny little amount. But since we're squeezing it down by ten times, it raises the depth by a factor of ten. And so it makes this a lot easier for us to measure more precisely and more accurately how much uh, rain we got when we get very small amounts. And we can measure it to the hundredth of an inch. We, there's no way we could see where a hundredth of, of an inch is here. So we, we squeeze that area down by a factor of ten, which pushes this up by a factor of ten, and we can record our rain really easily, which hopefully we'll get to do sometime before August 1st this summer.